Good evening and welcome to the Homes of Hope Virtual Spring Gala. We're so happy that you've joined us here at Avenue. I'm Jay Du and I would like to personally welcome everyone that is connecting with us virtually. Thank you so much for your time. A big shout out to those that are also hosting the watch parties in their homes, churches, backyards, drive-in theaters. Okay, maybe not drive-in theaters, but that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Thank you also to my fellow board members, advisory council members, and Solid Rock Club members. We love that you are part of our Homes of Hope family and that tonight we are able to connect either in person or virtually. You know, there's an African proverb that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. And tonight we are all together as we share Homes of Hope's vision, stories, news, and more. Tonight's gala wouldn't be possible without the generosity of our incredible sponsors. Our presenting sponsor, South State Bank. A gift in honor of Homes of Hope founder, Tim Revis, Meredith Signature Homes. Wells Fargo, Spiro Financial, Dick Brooks Honda, Network Controls, United Community Bank, our videographers, Bobby and Mark at Ritu Creative, AVL Solutions, The Totes Team, Paige and Robbie Haney with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, House of Rayford, Flock, Grand South Bank, Sphinx, NHE, County Bank, Silver Airways, Flagship Properties, Northbridge Wealth Management, Holiday Ingram Real Estate Law, James White Enterprises, First Choice Property, Palmetto Landscaping, Greenville Glide. Thank you for all your partnership and investment in the work and mission of Homes of Hope. We believe tonight's gala is going to be a celebration and an inspiring evening. Homes of Hope is proud to be a part of hundreds of families and individuals' lives as doors have opened and milestones achieved. Tonight, we will hear from Homes of Hope's president and CEO, Don Oglesby, our chairman of the board, Tim Justice, and we will showcase some powerful stories from our men's workforce development program and our affordable housing program. As our virtual gala unfolds, you will see a link at the bottom of the screen showing you how you can support the work and mission here at Homes of Hope. Whew, we can all agree that the past year or so has been unforgettable no matter how hard we might want to forget it. Remember the do-it-yourself haircuts, putting on hand sanitizer like we were an evil genius, and the countless walks of shame as you forgot your mask and had to go back to the car? Early on during those COVID months, I decided to lose 10 pounds and I'm happy to report that I've only got 14 more pounds to go. A couple of months ago, I was doing laundry and I whispered, it's almost our anniversary to a pair of sweatpants I'd been wearing for a year. Now, I called my Zoom meeting look laced up from the waist up. Uh, even though it has been a challenging year at Homes of Hope, it has been a year of tremendous growth. Did you know that right now we have homes under construction in Columbia? And coming very soon, construction will begin in Charleston. Many of you are already familiar with our work here in Greenville, Spartanburg, and Anderson. The need for safe and affordable housing continues to grow across our state. Our mission statement is Homes of Hope opens doors for economic mobility through housing, economic, and workforce development. Now it is my pleasure to introduce to you the chairman of the board, Tim Justice, and the president and CEO of Homes of Hope, Don Oglesby. Hello and welcome to the 2021 Homes of Hope Virtual Gala. Homes of Hope where we build, develop, and connect. We don't just build homes, we build lives. And we feel like that is a mission very worthwhile for our community and for you guys. This is an opportunity for a lot of you folks who may not know a whole lot about Homes of Hope to get familiarized with our vision and our mission. Our mission here at Homes of Hope is why I got involved. We produce affordable housing like these for our community. Not only are they affordable on the rental side, but they're also energy efficient and beautiful as you can see. Tonight you'll be given an opportunity to participate financially with Homes of Hope. And I hope each and every one of you will find it in your heart to give financial support and even voluntary support to us. Hope is what it's all about. Unless a person has hope, they can't dream. That's what Homes of Hope does. It provides hope 
for these families. And once we're able to provide a roof over their head in a quality neighborhood in and around folks who are of all income ranges, it changes their life. We look forward to meeting all of you and I appreciate you being with us tonight and thanks for your attention. Hello everyone, my name is Don Oglesby. I'm the CEO of Homes of Hope and I wanna welcome you to our 2021 virtual gala. We're excited and always are about our work and mission of affordable housing and workforce development for men overcoming addictions. Both of those efforts hopefully lead to economic mobility and success for families so that their lives really can change. The lives of their children, the lives of their grandchildren. Generational change is what we're after. You're gonna hear some stories tonight about generational change and how lives have been impacted. You're a part of that if you're here tonight and we appreciate your support. We thank you for being here. We're grateful that you're tuning in and please enjoy the evening. Thank you, Tim and Don. You know, sometimes when you or I get asked to be a part of some sort of community work or volunteer, it's tough to really understand what goes on behind the scenes. So when Don Oglesby asked me to join the board, one of the things that I required is that he not only took me, but took my wife and family on a little tour to see really what we were gonna get involved in. I knew that Homes of Hope was something that I believed in on the mission side, but I really needed to see how the vision was being executed each and every day. So Don hopped in my car a few years ago and drove my family around. And because of the car seats and the arrangement of the kids, j -Doo was in the very back, you know, the back back and we went around in the West Greenville community in several places where our homes are being built. But now, because we have that as an option for you to do a little bit more, I don't know, safely and a little bit more fun during these crazy times, now let's go to the virtual tour and I hope you join me and Don on one of these. The first place we always go on the tour is West Greenville. Some people know where the West End is. Uh, West Greenville is an actual neighborhood that's considered a special emphasis neighborhood by the city. Just ahead here is called Kingsview Point and it has a real story of transformational change. And so I'm gonna pull over here and let's get out and I will tell you the story of Kingsview Point. So Kingsview Point was really a site for sore eyes in a bad way. When we first started working in the neighborhood, it was really dilapidated housing, really poor conditions in the neighborhood. Uh, and we worked with the city of Greenville to partner with them, and they invested a whole lot of money to take all of the families that lived there and put them in better, more energy efficient, affordable housing. And then we came in and raised all of it uh, there was a dead end street there. What you see now behind me, there's two brand new streets and there was one old dead end street that we actually demolished and built two new streets and 43 houses behind me that became a mixed income community. So I'm gonna pull into Kingsview Point and we'll just ride through for a second. And uh, you can see one of our main principles at Homes of Hope is to build market quality housing. We don't want affordable housing to stick out all of them are of equal quality and design. And you'll see that there's a mixture of single family and some two-story duplexes in here. So we're real proud of Kingsview Point. It's a, it's a great example of mixed income communities that work. So the next stop on the tour is Chicora Crest, which I love, it's just a great neighborhood and great area it's strategically located it's only a couple of minutes walk from the baseball field and a couple of more minutes walk to falls park and what i love about it it's a true mixed income community meaning it it's, it's basically 50 50. it's just the way it's supposed to be and they kind of love each other as a community and you've got folks that maybe make a hundred thousand dollars or more living next to somebody who might make twenty five thousand dollars a year and it doesn't matter to them once they become a part of a community, those things don't matter. Okay, so the last stop on our tour is the Men's Training Center. We're incredibly proud of the work that we do in workforce development for men uh, overcoming addictions. And this training center is such a cool building. All right, so here we are at the training center. 
This is a 10,000 square foot building where our men get their training. Uh, they have their classroom space here where they have, I think it's 928 hours of training. And inside we have constructed a building, a house, an actual house that people can live in that the men build for their on the job training. It's really cool. When they live with us for a year, they live at Gideon's house. It's really a cool house too. It's 5,000 square feet. It houses all nine men. And they live with us in this house at no cost to them uh, the whole year. And then when they hit their nine month mark of working for us, they go to work for their new employer and they save up all those paychecks for the last three months of that year. Gets them started going forward. It's just the last piece of the puzzle after their recovery to really be successful and have that marketable skill that an employer will pay them good money for. It's just life changing. It's nothing quite like it and we're very proud of that program. Since we're unable to host our annual live auction this year, we're offering an online auction. Please look over the multiple packages and items to help support the Homes of Hope family while grabbing some cool stuff. We got trips, golf packages, and some really cool Clemson items. Maybe even the number one NFL draft picks hairbrush. Trevor Lawrence, he did. <sighs> now, let's have a little contest. To the first person in the comments on Facebook who can guess correctly how many counties in South Carolina is Homes of Hope working in, and we'll contact the winner. Good luck. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Rose and Natalia Rosario and Tawana Pickens. Please watch. Nineteen eighties was a very hard time in my country. It was a lot of violence, a lot of drugs, a lot of issues. Everything moves through who you know and how much you can get out of that person. One in a trillion million people get opportunity to leave something to the children. My promise to my kids when they were little was, you are not gonna go through what I went through. I became a citizen. My daughter was still very little. She was waving the flags with me. My kids were in school here. And my girl went to Clemson. She's doing absolutely good too. I wanted it to get a house for the longest time. So I started improving my credit. And then where I was living, the rent went really, really high. My daughter works for the city. So I called my daughter, please help me with these. I don't know what to do. So I said to myself, well, let me just reach out to somebody at the Northside Development Group. She said, you know, Homes of Hope has built this house and we, we, we can help you work with them. She says, mama, how about if we try this. So one day I said, yeah, let's do it. My name is Tawana Pickens. I am from Anderson and I teach here in Anderson. I have two girls. I moved several times. The last residence was an apartment. Just It was just not in a good area. I, I remember like it was yesterday, my car was stolen. And that day I said, I, I'm gonna have to do something. When that, cause my girls could have been in the car. Being a teacher, it is hard to find housing, like where the students are, where the schools are, it's really, really hard. I don't make much, but I make too much. There's no programs that I can really, you know, apply for. I seen the development of this area as I drive by, before they even started to build the houses, I am um, seeing a sign outside. I was like, oh, let me let me call. And you know, I started to look into the application process. I just filled it out and, and brought all my paperwork in. And um, she said she was gonna send it up to Greenville and um, they'll give me a call and I, and they did. And I was like, oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, I gotta tell somebody. I was like, I called my sister, I was like, I think I got a house. I think I got it. We started all the paperwork. She connected me with all these wonderful people and here I am. <laughs> Don Oglesby was looped in from the beginning and he would be on like all of the email chains just being like, yep, I'm good. I'm good, just let me know when you need me. <laughs> he was a huge help. Everybody 
who pinched to help me was wonderful. I closed my house on the 6th of January at 1.30 in the afternoon. That's when I got my keys and I officially became a homeowner. And I got those keys and I came with my daughter. <laughs> and we walked the house all over the place and I couldn't sleep. Uh, it was like, is this for real? Is, is At this age and at this time in my life, I have something that is mine and my kids. It is a dream for me. It is really a dream. It's been more than a dream. When we moved in, um, it was in the summertime, and we were like, oh my God, we were so excited. My daughters were ecstatic. They were the most excited. My oldest, she's really never had a home where she has her own room, space. She lives close to her school. Those things she hadn't had. We can have company, we can have you know dinners, and being able to have this here is amazing had Homes of Hope not chosen to be here. I, I, I don't know where I would be. As a teacher, I don't know, and as a parent, I don't know. If I could say anything to the donors, it would be thank you so much for putting in your hard-earned money into programs like these. You really are helping the people in your community. You're really changing their lives. The people that you help will then turn around and help others. The first thing I will say is that I'm very grateful, absolutely to the moon grateful, and I'm very humble of being lucky enough to have this opportunity. Home is security, it's love, it's sweat, it's tears, it's a legacy, it's happiness. Thank you um, for um, giving me a chance. Without you, it wouldn't be Miss Pickens being able to teach with her students. Holmes Hope being here helped me as a person to, to become a better me. What a moving story, an amazing example of what a difference a safe and affordable home can make in a family's life. Thank you to Rose, Natalia, and Tawana. Now, please join me as we watch and listen to Lloyd Jackson and Justin Bailey, two graduates of our Men's Workforce Development Program. My name is Lloyd Jackson. When I was a kid, growing up, I had the best life any kid could ever want. Baseball was definitely my first love. I never wanted to do anything else. I absolutely loved it, man. Growing up, that's really all I did was play baseball. So I graduated high school, went to college, and I had a shoulder injury. And uh, that's, you know, everything, all my hopes and dreams of going to college to play baseball were just gone. And I'd gotten prescribed some pain pills. It's like once baseball was removed, it really allowed me a lot of time that I couldn't fill in with anything else other than drugs. The pain pills led to a lot more like smoking marijuana. As any drug addict will tell you, if you know where to find pills and, and weed at, there's obviously, there's cocaine and then, man, my life just started on a downward spiral that I never ever imagined that I would go. You know, I never ever, ever thought I would have a needle in my arm, but it, 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 it progressed there. The breaking point for me was an overdose. I remember waking up, seeing my family and my mom and everybody was just crying. And I remember just thinking, if you don't do something, you're gonna die in this addiction. The next day, I checked into Miracle Hills Overcomer Center because it was life or death for me. My name's Justin Bailey. I was born in Aiken, South Carolina. Growing up, I struggled with suicidal thoughts. I never really fit in at school. I never really wanted to go to school. And 13 years old, I, I found alcohol and drugs. At that point in my life, I, fought, I found the solution to my problems. I started drinking and, and smoking marijuana. I went to jail that year, 13 years old, for um, being accused of assault and battery. 15 years old, by that point I'm selling drugs, selling marijuana. 
16 years old, my first marijuana charge. And that's when I started using IV drugs. Had I known the degree that and the depravity that that would take me to later on in life, I would have never touched it to start with. Uh, I frequently had blood poisoning and was visiting emergency rooms. I had hit the lowest point in my life, a rock bottom, and God just impressed upon my heart to call a friend of mine. At that time, he was in Homes of Hope, and I heard peace in his voice. And I said that, and I knew this person. This is the person that I did my first drug with, and God had completely changed his life. And I told God, I said, at that moment, whatever you give in him, that peace, that reason for living, that enjoyment of life, that that's what I wanted. He told me about Miracle Hill, Overcomers, uh, a drug treatment facility. There I began experiencing things that I never thought that I would have. And Steve Vicari, the director of men's workforce development at Homes of Hope would come every Wednesday morning and do chapel service. And I remember thinking that, man, this is something that, 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 that I can get with, you know? This is something that, that, that I'd like to do with my life. When it got closer to time to leave the program of Overcomers, I sat down with Steve and told him that this is where, where my heart was and that whatever it would take to get there, that I'm not losing hope in Homes of Hope. And then as soon as I put in my application, he came and interviewed me to make sure that Homes of Hope would be a suitable fit for me. That was the point where my life changed. He told me on the spot that I had been accepted to Homes of Hope. The peace that came with that, and then also that day, uh, another guy that I was in the program with, he was accepted to Homes of Hope. So I knew that I wasn't gonna be alone in this, in this journey. Uh, the first day there, I remember being picked up on a Friday morning. 6.15 that Friday morning, and I got to, the, to Gideon's house, and I was just amazed at how nice it was. The nicest house I've ever lived in, and just the peace of God that rested on that place, and still does. Gideon's house is, is a, a place for rest for those who are struggling with addiction, and the atmosphere changes in that house in the morning. We start them out by doing praise and worship, just singing songs to the Lord in complete freedom. It's literally a house of hope. And I'll never forget it. My first day at work at Homes of Hope, we were laying flooring on the first day. <laughs> I fell in love with just the workplace environment, the guys I was with that day, because I realized that no matter what, I could do this. I, I, I could work a normal job and contribute to society like a normal person. And that's something that sounds crazy, but I never thought I would be back to that. And I was diving headfirst in it. I said, whatever they're going to teach me here, I'm going to learn. I'm going to pursue this and put my heart and my focus into this. Graduation was a celebration. Finally making it to that point was like a mile marker of success. I, I never really completed or accomplished anything or never had a, a celebration for anything good. After Homes of Hope, I was blessed and fortunate enough to be able to get a house it was downtown with the two brothers that I graduated with. I had my Arms of Hope brothers with me. My roommate Lloyd is a great guy. I can talk to him about anything. And those are my brothers. They are. I, I, I love both of them with all my heart. We work different jobs. Lloyd's in general contracting. I'm in electrical. I actually work for a company called the Acropolis Corporation now. We build decks, we build porches, we build a little bit of everything. The Homes of Hope experience did nothing but cultivate those skills that I needed to transfer directly into the workplace. God's opened some mighty doors. I stayed in Greenville Rescue Mission before I came to Overcomers. Now I am afforded the opportunity to go back there twice a month and to preach the gospel. I am so delighted and privileged and blessed to be able to go to the place where God brought me from and give people hope that he can bring them from there too. If I could say anything to the donors of Homes of Hope, I would say this. You have completely not only changed the future that I had laid before me and given me the opportunity to have a new one. My family's been affected. They get to see their son provide for himself. They know that I've been built on a good foundation. 
doesn't just stop someone graduating home to hope. We're carrying what we learned there and the discipleship that that program afforded us to our workplace, to our homes, to our families, to our churches. And it's producing fruit, fruit that's lasting. I really can't explain with words what it really means to give to Homes of Hope. Like it's so much more than just, a, than just money because it's what's being done with the money or what happens when you see the donors and the volunteers and like this, it, it, it really is nothing short of a miracle. If I wouldn't have went to Homes of Hope, I truly, truly believe I would be dead. That sounds kind of harsh, but that's, that's the truth. I, I honestly believe that. Homes of Hope saved my life. <laughs>Thank you, Justin and Lloyd. And I'm excited to announce that Lloyd is on his honeymoon right now. On June 5th, Lloyd married Sarah Epperson. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you again, guys. We're so excited for you. And we have a bonus video for you this year. We thought it would be awesome to hear from an employer that has hired Homes of Hope men's workforce development graduates. My name is Brandon Nunn. I'm a project manager with Acropolis Corporation. We're a construction company based out of Piedmont, South Carolina. Homes of Hope has a great way of allowing and equipping the people that are coming through there with the necessary means to approach life. That's the type of people that we want, people that have failed, but also recognize that they have the ability to, if they push forward, to you know, do anything really. It shows dedication to uh, really longevity and strength getting through things. We went through the Homes of Hope training facility and just kind of got a feeling of the type of guys that were there, the instructors. We're really impressed with the, the mannerisms of the guys. They were very respectful. If you find somebody that wants to learn, you can teach them anything. So, you know, some of the stuff that I've thrown Lloyd into since he's been with our company is, you know, tile work, electrical work, plumbing work, structural work, run it through once or twice and he seems to get it. So I think Lloyd's future is very promising. To me, you know, these guys coming through and completing two years of dedicated effort into making their lives better is just amazing and to me that's a person that I want working for me. And once again it's my pleasure to introduce the president and CEO of Homes of Hope, Mr. Don Oglesby. Hey everybody, uh, it's always exciting when I get to talk about Homes of Hope at the end of something like this where we could really see stories of people that we've served and work that we're doing, our work and mission is always exciting to me. I never get tired of it. And I thank you all for joining us tonight to watch this and to be a part. All of you have been supporters. You know, well, we kind of recapped uh, at one point recently that we've invested $83 million over our 22-year history in community development. And this next two years alone, we've already calculated an additional $70 million that we're going to invest in the community through our work. And that just blows me away. We'll almost match 22 years worth of investment in two years. That's exciting for me. I hope it is for you. And you get to be a part of that. And you may say, you know what, Don, if y'all are investing $70 million, why in the world would I want to give you any money? And the answer is $70 million is our real estate investment. That's dollars that we don't operate on. Those are dollars that we put directly into housing. So every dollar that you give tonight, if you make a pledge, goes straight into the programs that really help the people that we serve. Those programs don't charge a fee. They don't earn any income. We need you for that. The $70 million is going to produce in housing. You help us actually help people and be a part of life change. And this year, more than any other time, this is the greatest time for you to support because we have a match. Our need this year is $400,000. And through our generous donors, several of them, and you know who you are, and I'm going to give you all a big extra hug when this is over because I love all of you. You have given a pledge of $200,000 as a match. So every dollar that you give tonight will be doubled. And if you give up to that $200,000 match challenge, then we will meet that $400,000 need. So please take advantage of this opportunity.
And you can even do that as a monthly pledge. We have what we call a solid rock club, where you can actually just sign up and give monthly. That counts towards the match, and it's all going to the same place in programs to help people. People that know me well know that I'm a movie buff. I really love movies, and my immediate family know I cry at the end of all of them. I'm sorry, I do, I admit it. The movies that have great overcoming of adversity, when you have a barrier in front of you and you're overcoming at the end of the movie, I cry every time, I can't help it. I cry at all the videos that we put out, even if I've seen them 10 times. One of my favorite movies is Castaway. Castaway was a Tom Hanks movie, and Tom Hanks, got stranded on a desert island and was on there for five or six years, I think, and finally managed his way off. He became the hero of his own story. We often say at Homes of Hope, our clients are the hero of their own stories, not us. We just try to connect them with opportunities to do better, to, to move up, to have economic mobility, to succeed in life. They become the hero of their own stories because they're doing the work. So tonight I would challenge you to think about being the hero of this story. As Tom Hanks was the hero of his own stories, we need you to be the hero of this story. And that is the hero of the story of $400,000 that we need as an entity to do the work that we've been called to do. Will you please help us? And I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very, very much for being a supporter of Homes of Hope. Thank you again, Don, and thank you all for viewing tonight's virtual gala. If you missed any of it, it will replay. We look forward to seeing you again next year. Now, we hope you'll join us for our golf classic at two Cliffs courses, Monday, October 11th at the Cliffs of Glassy and Monday, October 18th at the Cliffs of Kiwi Vineyards. Thank you. Good night.